position. was begun in 1915. It was when the U.S. government came in. They were going to build a railroad to connect with the one coming out of Seward, the 72 miles that had already been built out of Seward, and then they wanted to go north to the gold field. And we had an acreage. That was 1969. And then to our left, that's the British Petroleum. I don't point it out because they own Alaska. I mean, because they're the biggest oil of the year. But because when they built that hotel, uh, the building, they planned it to be a hotel inlet. I had said that Cook Inlet was um, part of the Pacific Ocean. So turning an arm comes off of that. Now, by 1917, when they Shara Swarde, okay, it's named after the person who bought Alaska from Russia. He was the Secretary of State in 1867. I'm going to go to the house. Thank you. 
a military installation. We can also individually identify them, and this is because they have a certain cut to their dorsal fin, and with this, it would be a certain pigmentation of a saddle patch, certain markings, and each whale is fully identified by this. Now we're going to wait for these guys to come up. There's a rather large group coming around the corner, and I'm not exactly sure uh, what they're going to do. They're either going to stand towards the shoreline or, or out here. Uh, basically, I want to see who this bull is, and that the bulls are uh, a little bit easier to identify if they have certain markings on them. Whereas the females have a more triangular shaped dorsal fin, they have a saddle patch too that you can identify. Now, their lives parallel that of humans in many respects. Once the 14th year, and the female outlives the male. And they are long lived. Now, we have about 11 of these residential pods, uh, the fish eaters. And pods actually means just a, a grouping. And we have about 370 whales that have been fully identified by markings and by being right there. So I wouldn't worry too much. We're going to have our time with them. I'm just trying to figure out. Um, they don't mind us being on their left hand side. Uh, they actually uh, don't mind the boats at all. Why don't they mind the boats? Because they can go about 25 miles an hour and uh, we definitely aren't a threat to them. Um, basically, this guy here looks like it's fishing. I'm not sure about the others that are coming up over here, whether they're in a resting mode. Sometimes uh, they'll get called into a resting mode. And they're right up at the cave. And I think I'm going to let this guy go. And we're going to go up here. Probably out front doing what we call echolocating. And echolocating is often what size of whatever it is that's in front of them. being stopped here, we are more subjected to the motion of the ocean. Give them a minute or two, they'll be up close to us, you'll get some real... Spy hop there. Resting these whales basically uh, can't completely go to sleep in the they. breathers. Whales are conscious breathers. So uh, they do have two sides of their brain and they can put one of them in a resting mode or REM sleep, they call it. And that's what happens here. And they're known to stay down longer too when they're just resting and that. And I see some young ones. Look back behind us. This is a pod that's not usually in here very often. I'm seeing unusual flopping around when they roll on their sides because they have very good eyesight above and below the water uh, they basically uh, are in an attack mode or in a mode of looking at things I think we just want to be right here you guys I really do this is a rather large pod of whales and I believe it's the AJs, I'm not sure. I'm gonna try to identify them as we go. We do have a whale research boat on the boat, and this whale research boat, her book, um, basically is very, very good book. Uh, in fact, we have it for sale. We have it for sale, and if you have a library, 
with books, uh, you probably would like this in it. it. It is just an exceptionally written book. And these guys are just everywhere here. This is a big group. And this is one of the reasons I want to see if AJ's in here. Once again, they're interactive here. You can see this one's upside down here, rolling around looking at us. Snowflake, made up mostly of gases and oxygen. 
Just in case if the weather did not cooperate, at least I have a good shot of it for the time. Mount McKinley. The tallest one in North America. Yes, Mr. Elin, who's Denali? 20,320 feet. 20,300 feet. 
بلندترین کوه شمال امریکا This is Talkeetna Lodge. این هتلی بود که در پارک دنالی من توش اقامت داشتم. Which has got the second best view of the Mount McKinley. Here's a Talkeetna Hotel or Lodge on the way to Denali. Five star hotel. How's that for some news? Do the. We will pull over so you can look at him here. Does the moose attack the humans? Do the moose what? Do they attack people at all? In they any... do, and with this lady here. Standing outside her car with her babies right here. This isn't. These are year yearling cows. These were born brand new last year. We'll go slow here since there aren't any cars behind us. Get out closer to Denali. I'll actually tell you a lot of things that are available uh, to do up there. There are going to be some things that do cost a little. This is the best picture of the Mount McKinley. This is the bus that took us here. record for yeah, that's, that's Alright, this is Mount McKinley. Yeah. من جزء هدفم این بوده که بلندترین قله هر قاره را دیده باشم. در قاره شمال امریکا، امریکای شمالی اینا امریکای جنوبی هم دیدم. افریقا رو هم دیدم که کلیمانجا رو بود گروپ ها رو ندیدم در روسی هست البورز ماونتن و ایورست هم ندیدم با اون که هواپیما گرفتم که رایی که خوب و من نشون بده نتونست someone that will come aboard so if you want to stay seated um, a representative from Holland America will come aboard talk to you tell you what rooms you are hand out your room keys to you tell you what what's going to happen with your luggage um, um, and what to do and tomorrow what to do with your luggage also when you get ready to leave well there's more off to the right as well right? and then more to the right they're saying Now 
This is not snow yet, right? I'm sorry? This I'm... is not called snow yet. No, is it? no, no, not at all. Okay. You have to remember the uh, caribou, which range of apparatus, is the uh, only member of the deer family in North America. This is otherwise known as chicken, right? Yeah. Now look at he's posturing at you. He's See? calling. So what? Lycopus. Lycopus is its Latin name. If you look at his uh, legs, he's feathered all the way to the yeah, nail on the toe. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, lycopus means feathered foot. Here's the chalet where I'm staying. Here's the view of the outside of the chalet. And here is my room. Actually, I'm the first occupant of the room. The whole thing is brand new. This is me, and this is my eyes and thigh, which is still is uh, not very good. Here is another chalet up there in the hill. And here's the view of the back of the room. Another chalet on that side. Here's going from my room back to the main lodge in the hotel. I have to go through this beautiful road. Of course I can take the bus, but this is Probably prettier. building of the chalet still not completed first day of operation
اینجا جاده رو که هفت ساعت طول کشید از شهر انکورج به پارک مکینلی یا پارک دنالی الان اسمش شده حالا قطار گرفتم همون هفت ساعت بازگشت با قطاری با کوپای قشنگ و دیدهای خیلی خوب شرکت های مختلف کوپه های مختلف دارن که همش به یه دونه کشنده بس میشه هر کوپه قیمت های خود شده داره دکور خود شده داره بس اینه که شما با کدوم بخواید برید مرتی کشنده همش اون یکی خواهد بود فرق نمی کنه دیمیز که درد شرکت مختلفه ولی کشنده یکی قد این پولار بیرا سه متر تا سه متر میرسیم این یه دونه واقعی خوش شده است این که چقدر از یه آدم میتونه بلندتر باشه این موقع بود که افتخار بود خیرس و زدن و کشتن الان دیگه افتخار نیست این خیرس قهوهی کودیاک مثل که اینا قدشون تا دو متر و هشتاد 